Ben the Bar Guy back with another video to help you make better drinks and today is the second video of Mastering Cocktail Ice. And if you haven't seen video number one, I'll link it right up here. Cocktail Ice, the way we do it at Reliable Tavern, takes a Klein Bell, a chainsaw, a bandsaw, and maybe that was a little much for you guys. I was shaking with Big Ice at my bar before I had those things. So I'm gonna show you kind of the sneaky way to get around things, some tips and techniques and some tools that'll help you get big ice to shake with and present on that look just like this, clear and beautiful. Welcome back to Mastering Cocktail Ice video two. Let's make better drinks. We're continuing our discussion on how you cut great clear ice cubes. I know what you were thinking. You just watched the, the, the video with the Klein Bell and the bandsaw and you're like, Ben, how in the world can I cut ice at home? I don't have those tools. I'm not gonna spend $7,000 on a brand new Klein Bell. Hey, totally get it. I could barely convince a bar to spend $7,000 on a Klein Bell. So I totally understand where you're coming from, but there are options, trust me. We're gonna walk you through a little video of how we cut, exactly how we cut, our blocks of clear ice. Now, where you would get this at home is from an igloo cooler, uh, which we can put a link in the description on how we used to do this at restaurants with lots of these little igloo coolers. But if you could just fit an igloo cooler inside of your freezer at home, as long as that freezer's got the cold air coming at the top and it freezes down, in other words, the air comes from the top, and you will get a, cr a clear block of ice, except for, the very bottom of the cooler will be a little bit cloudy and that's because all the air and so forth couldn't, couldn't get out. Now, if you timed it right and you took the block out before it totally froze down, you would just have clear ice the whole way. The water at the bottom of the cooler wouldn't have frozen yet cloudy. But the problem with that is that sometimes ice is kind of malformed on the bottom there and it's not a clear edge and it's not that hard to actually chip off cloudy ice out of your cooler. Okay, now if you're watching this video and you're wondering where we got our ice, remember we were cutting pages out of our Klein Bell uh, with a chainsaw. Okay, so what you're looking at in this video, fully tempered page that we've left out for about 45 minutes to an hour out of our Klein Bell that's been, that's been chainsawed. And it's very important that you temper your ice as much as possible when you're gonna cut it exactly. If you want like crystal clear, cuts you want them straight down nice and neat uh, you have to have tempered ice what tempered ice means is that it's sweating tempered ice is wet ice and what that means is that the entire block once the ice block has started to sweat it means everything in the block is at zero degrees celsius and what that allows you to do is get a nice soft ice block that's easily manipulated into cutting into pieces, okay? And it's not that hard as the video will show you. It's actually really simple. I don't want you guys to be intimidated by cutting ice or these knives I'm gonna show you, okay? We're gonna show you how to do this at, at home with the simplest of knives, probably what you have already in your knife block if you have a basic all-purpose knife block. We're gonna start with talking about awesome knives. If you wanna get them for your restaurant, if you're doing mass amounts of ice every day, you're gonna need these, okay? They're Japanese ice knives, all right? These, these Japanese ice knives are a bit expensive. The big one we have here is well over $400. The small one we have there is definitely between $100 and $200. These have really sharp blades that are cut like this, okay? And what they do is they create a groove in your ice, and so, you get a really good start on cutting ice. And if you're cutting hundreds of cubes a day for a service, you're gonna want something that speeds you up. And these, these ice knives are exactly it. But you notice, you see that, that block of ice, okay? That block of ice is perfectly tempered, okay? It's nice and wet. Uh, that's a page out of our freezer. But if you had a block coming out of your uh, igloo cooler, that igloo cooler, after about 45 to an hour, that block of ice you got out of your igloo cooler would also look like that. All right, we're gonna start cutting this block. So how do we go about that? Well, the key is that we need to cut the exact size that we want, okay? One of the tricks that you might like to have, you see that little ledge 
on the video, that, that ledge might be your sink at home. If you could fit a cutting board like this inside of your sink, like you could measure your sink and figure out one and then put it like on the upside down part of a bowl or a colander and you have it sitting there with a little bit of an edge so the ice doesn't move around because ice loves to slide around on these. And one of the greatest things we had here at, at Reliable was this sink with a ledge. And if we put down huge cutting boards, you could use the ledge as leverage when you were cutting the ice. That is one little trick that'll help keep from the ice from sliding around if you're gonna cut it in your sink. Definitely the best place to do it is cut it in your kitchen sink, but have a cutting board about the size of your sink, which you can find cutting boards of any size um, for the size of your kitchen sink. Uh, here, we're starting to cut through the block with the, the, the ice knife, but I'll stop right here because not everybody has a Japanese ice knife and nobody wants to spend $450 now. So if, if you're not a restaurant and you're cutting hundreds of blocks, hundreds of blocks of ice up, okay, over the course of time, all you, all you need is a bread knife and that serrated blade will be plenty good, okay, for doing exactly what we're doing here. And you know, it can be a $10 knife. I like the one with a little bit of a dip. I've had better luck with that, but you can get a little more leverage and you're gonna get a groove just like you're doing with the Japanese ice knife. Now it won't be as fast and won't be as efficient, but if you're inviting people over for a quick drink or a little party, there's no reason that this won't work for you. $10 bread knife at every, re I, I mean, I have never been at a restaurant that didn't have these everywhere. So they're, they're not expensive whatsoever. And you can get great cuts uh, from simply a bread knife. But what you really need to do is use that serrated blade to start a serious groove. You need a groove in order to get this ice to cut straight down. It's gonna be a little wet. You're gonna get some, some scattered. That's why it's great to do it over your kitchen sink, okay? But it honestly shouldn't be that hard to move through the ice. If you can just put a little pressure down on it, I recommend putting your hand down and just gliding through, and you'll see, you'll start a groove. Okay, that groove's awesome. You really want that groove because we're gonna use that later to set a sharper knife into that groove and create a nice point that right in the bottom of that groove and that will click through and you'll get this nice clean cut. Now, this is the key, okay? You're using a butcher knife. You wanna, you, you wanna buy a cheap butcher knife that has a flat edge, okay? You don't want a big butcher knife with a beveled edge. There you go, there, there's a nice groove there. Here's your, here's your nice flat edged butcher knife that honestly is so easy to buy. It's, it's not great for cutting up things as a butcher because a butcher wants a be, a, not only a beveled edge with a heavy back goes to a point in the front of the knife, it, they want a curved bottom because that curved bottom gets through bone a lot easier, right? We wanna set the flat edge along the entire block as far as we can, okay? So you actually can find these, these cheaper knives, these straight edged, non-beveled butcher knives in like Japanese markets with a little bit of downward pressure with that flat blade. It was very easy to get this little creek, you can hear it, as you, set, as you set the blade into the groove that you've gotten from your bread knife, you get this little k -k 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 sound, and that's important. That means you're, you're breaking the ice at, into the groove, okay? And you're taking this sort of leveled groove and you're making it a point. And that's really important. Because once you set that, now your ice can break straight down. And this is, it's really also important to uh, cut your ice in the middle when you're cutting like this. If you cut on the edges of your ice, ice breaks kind of like lightning finds the quickest route to the ground. If, you've got, if you guys have ever learned about lightning strikes, the lightning finds whatever object makes it get to the ground the fastest. It always wants to get to the ground. Ice breaks similarly. Whatever is the easiest path for it to go, it will go. So if you're cutting, this is a block, okay, and you're cutting in the center, it's very hard for it to crack this way or this way because there's more mass on either side of that cut. So it's very easy to cut straight through, okay? And just to go from here to here, as opposed to here all the way out here. But if you're cutting on the end, let's say you have a block, you know, that's my fist, and you're cutting right here, okay? Well, the distance here is very similar to the distance here and here. 
so it doesn't necessarily want to cut straight down. You really need to cut where there's mass on either side that's the, the distance for it to break is longer to break where you don't want it to break and shorter where you want it to break. So that's how you get clean cuts straight down. They just look beautiful right off the bat. That's how you do that by cutting in the middle first. You know, we go from a page into these strips. Once you get an ice strip, you need to know how wide your rocks glass is. You know, here at Reliable, we use a two and an eighth uh, cut for a cube. And so you would take a ruler and you just measure across. Importantly, you wanna cut in the middle. And uh, as you're cutting across, you'll start to measure out those cuts. Now be careful your hand isn't underneath the blade because sometimes with these tempered cubes, they will cut so easy. It really is like butter sometimes, depending on how long you've left it out. So make sure your hand isn't under that blade because your pressure as you're pushing down will we'll force it down. If your hand is under there, you can get cut. Okay, as you get a groove and you get that little, you get the blade down in there, uh, just with just, just a tap and you can see the ice start to break there and you want it to be as straight as possible. So you just tap through. Uh, we like to say that ice knows what kind of mood you're in. Kind of shave it down, make sure it's square. If you're in a bad mood and you're trying to cut three blocks and you're in a hurry, you're a bartender trying to open your bar and you're in a giant hurry trying to get open, the ice knows it will not cooperate with you. Ice wants patience and if you're bothering it, you better be gently bothering it, okay? It's like a sleeping bear, all right? You don't mess with it. You just have to kind of be peaceful with it. Be zen and the ice will cut better. I've, I've, I've had sessions that will tell me what kind of mood I am, how grumpy I am. It's crazy, ice knows, all right? So take your time and you can see we've cut a really clean break here, which is what we're after. Again, gotta have a tempered cube for this to be accurate, okay? If you're, you're trying to cut through a frozen cube that's still dry iced, you're not gonna get it. Now I'm gonna shave this down because our rock glasses, if you haven't noticed, are flared, okay? So because of this flare, we shave the edges of the bottom off, but also, if you want to be clever, you can shave the edges off both sides and you get this diamond feature, which is kind of cool, especially if you're cutting ice at home. I mean, who's not, what of your guests isn't going to be impressed by that? They're going to think you bought that from somewhere else and then you're going to tell them, nah, I, I came up with this method. You can say that, I don't even care. Don't even let the paint dry on this method. Go steal it. Yeah, make diamonds everywhere. See how easy this is? I mean, this took me seconds. This took me seconds, this little block. I left out for an hour and I'm cutting diamonds out of it. Diamonds. This ain't hard. Ice isn't hard. Ice isn't hard. With a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, you can make dope ice that impresses people. You can do it in your restaurant. You can do it in your house. It is easy. It can be crystal clear. All of this is a piece of cake. And I, I just feel like so many people out there got frustrated because they were told that filtered water was the way they did it. And you had to, oh, you had to boil it first and then you had to filter it and then you had to, all that's nonsense. There, there are people out there who argue that. I'm telling you, the ice you just looked at is crystal clear. It was not made by some sort of secret filtration or pressurized boiled water. That's all nonsense. You can get crystal clear ice, been doing it for years, just by freezing in one direction, just freeze in one direction, cut off the cloudy stuff, and then do exactly what we just told you. This knife plus a $10 sharpened knife, pressure, take something heavy, not this bread knife, but something heavy, <coughs> tap through it. And you're gonna have crystal clear cubes. This is not hard. It's just a matter of caring enough to make a nice ice cube. Once you're good at something, you're never bad at it again. It's like riding a bicycle. I encourage you guys to definitely get after cutting your own clear ice. It's possible. We struggled to find ways to get great ice at my bars. As long as I can remember, I was bugging managers and owners. Look, we can have great ice. We can have a great cocktail program, but we got to make our ice right. I had a lot of convincing to do, right? But I also had to come up with some tricks. And those tricks I'm going to share with you. This is the the, what I came up with on the grind, I'm gonna give to you free of charge, Ben the bar guy, helping you guys out because I wanna drink better cocktails at your bar, okay? So if you're a bartender and you want to make great drinks and you need an easy way to convince your owners to give you the ability to, to have big ice cubes and make better cocktails, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to do it, all right? You don't have a climb bell. Let's start with 
Can you make ice that you at least you can shake with, that's quick and easy and not a pain? I know some of you may go out there and try and use molds. The problem with molds, at home they're great. If you only need a couple cubes, no problem. But if you're at a bar and you're trying to create hundreds and hundreds of cubes really quickly for a service that night and you got set up and you're there an hour early, you're making $5 an hour if you're a bartender in the District of Columbia, every hour you have to spend for setup. So you're not trying to spend hours and hours cutting ice, okay? But you can do it a little quicker and the trick are mud pans, okay? These mud pans are nothing at a hardware store, 250. If you can't convince a manager to give you $25 for 12 mud pans, I mean, what are we even talking about? Or 50 bucks for more than that, 25 mud pans. Right, it's really such a simple thing. It's cheap, it's easy, and let me tell you why. Because of the shape, you see how it's shaped? That's really important. A mold is rubber, and you gotta turn it inside out, turn it back in, fill it up. It's a big pain. This is plastic, and all you gotta do is loosen it up a little bit. Now watch this. You got a big block of ice, all right? Now, here's the downside to this ice, okay? This isn't tempered yet, okay? It should be. I'm gonna cut it anyway for you guys, but it should be wet. We should leave this out for a little bit if we could. You see in the middle there? You see this white mark? That goes right down the middle. I call that the cloudy tenderloin, okay? Because it looks like, this looks like a tenderloin off a, off a beef cut, okay? The trouble with these is just that they're not insulated, so the ice isn't gonna freeze down. If you insulated the outside of these, the ice would freeze down in this direction and you would get clear ice, except for what froze on the top, and you could trim that off. You know, you could, you could take a knife like this and you could trim off that, that edge and you would have a crystal clear block. But what I was thinking for these is that we would use this for shaking. Now you might say, what about the cloudiness and shaking cube? Does it matter? We've done some tests on that. We take crystal clear cubes and we crack them into our martinis and Manhattans and we tested it against this cloudy ice with just a tenderloin. Now remember, the whole thing isn't cloudy, okay? Just the inside. It's just that little, that little center part, okay? So we would cut this up and I'll show you how we're gonna do that in just a second. And we'd put it into the Manhattan or martini and we couldn't tell the difference blind. Okay, so if you're shaking with it, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference because there's even more water in a shaken up drink than there is in a stirred drink. And a stirred drink is more sensitive to anything that's put into it. Now, what is this cloudiness? Now, the cloudiness inside here is just trapped air, mostly. Some stuff in the water that doesn't freeze perfectly into ice because ice, when, it, when it's just water molecules, will freeze into a crystal lattice like this. At the last second, it's, it's very dense. Water's the only thing in the world that I know of that is more dense as a liquid at very cold temperatures right before freezing than it is as a solid once it's frozen. And that's because the molecules squeeze down like this and in their polar charges at either end of the molecule force a crystal lattice and it expands and it actually is less dense as a solid. Think about how crazy that is. If water wasn't less dense as a solid, it wouldn't be able to float. We wouldn't have ice on top of ponds. We'd have water on the bottom of ponds. Everything would die that way. It would be, our entire lives would be different without that polar charge on the opposite end of a water molecule that causes a crystal lattice and a perfect crystal formation, okay? But if you have other things in the water, like fluoride or chlorine or whatever we put in our water, or even dust, that's gonna get trapped a little bit inside the ice. So that's what causes cloudiness as well as trapped air. The ice froze from the outside in, okay? And it's trapping all of the inside as it's getting frozen and then once it freezes that stuff can't be clear okay that's what's going on so that's why you get a little cloudiness but when you're talking about what's in your drink that little bit of imperfection it isn't going to change your drink so you can have magnificent drinks seriously at your bar by using this as shaking ice and i'll tell you i'll show you how quick it is to create this it really doesn't take long so the first thing you're going to want is a bread knife i, sh I mentioned it earlier when we were talking about sawing ice cubes, okay? Well, that's good when you're cutting clear ice, but when you're cutting cloudy ice, you actually can just get yourself a bucket. Get yourself one of these, start on the end. I usually say don't start on the end, okay? But in this case, I'm just gonna start on the end. Just start tapping. About the width of your shaking tin is what we want, okay? It gets a little messy, but look at that. This is a perfect cube for shaking a cocktail, okay? Fits inside your tin. 
okay? Now you're shaking with big ice. No, you're like, what about that whole block? What about, uh, how many, I mean, come on, man. It's too hard, okay. All right, well, let's see how, how fast the rest of this block goes. All right, guys, that's it. That block created usable ice either for stirred up drinks, like if it cracked apart on me, I would just crack that up and put it into a stirred drink. If it stayed pretty solid, I use it for a shaking drink, All right? I got one, two, like three shaking cubes and a bunch of crack, cracking ice that we can drop into our stirred drinks piece of cake that was just one of these you can freeze these in one shelf of a freezer and you get all these blocks and you can stack them boom then stack another one here and another one here you got two here right one two you got four stacked as many as you can and you stick them in there and you, then you come in and you spend what a minute a block in 20 minutes you'll have 100 150 cubes no problem, every day you refill these, another 10 minutes, 30 minutes of prep, top, and you can have hundreds of shaking cubes. You can't beat that if you're looking to make ice at your bar. Now at home, I also use these. If you're a home bartender, it's just, you stick two of those little tins inside your freezer, pop them out, bread knife them up when you got company over. It takes no time, all right? Now, let's talk about the more serious ice though. Okay, that was cloudy ice, that was shaking ice, all right? Well, and it's quick and dirty and easy. This is where we bring in this bad boy. This is how you get clear ice, restaurant style, big blocks at a time. Here's how it works. These are tubs meant for outside service. They have a gel inside of them that freezes down and you stick it into the freezer overnight, it charges over about eight hours and that gel keeps everything in here cold. So it's meant for food service, like if you were doing a picnic or you had a barbecue, right? It keeps everything in here pretty cold. Well, that's exactly the insulation that we need to freeze down blocks in one direction. Remember, one direction is what gets you clear ice. This is the trick. This is my own method. I came up with this. I don't care. Let's all have better drinks. That's why I'm doing this, okay? You fill this bad boy with water, you take a perforated pan, just like this. They're made just to fit in here. The water will be in here. As it freezes down in this direction, you will have a block crystal clear ice sitting inside this pan. Now, at the end of the freezing process, at the bottom of this bin, down here, you will have cloudy ice, but that's okay. Let me show you why. When you're done with the whole process like this, Everything's frozen, it's been a couple days. It takes two to three days for these to freeze in a freezer, by the way, so you gotta take your time. This is a lot of water. Also, you gotta have a top-down freezer somewhere in your kitchen, okay? But you flip this guy over, pop it off, upside down, you tap it out, you cut off the sides, and you pop out a lovely block of ice. It would be exactly this tall. And you can cut it into two and an eighths inches or two by twos all day. So that's how you would do it at your restaurant if you want crystal clear ice. Now the top, uh, the, the ice that sat on top of here is gonna be partly cloudy. You could use that theoretically for shaking ice, but what we found is that was way more concentrated cloudy than the cloudiness that was on these cubes, okay? So that actually did change the taste and we didn't like it as much. So be careful with the cloudy ice you get on top, but some of it will be clear. So if you can salvage some of that, sure, shake, shake away with it, okay? Then you're gonna chop off this edge and what you'll be left with under here is a block of crystal clear ice that you then can bread knife. And chop apart, okay? 
That's how that works. That's gonna take you a long time though. That's a lot of effort. Your bartenders have to be into it if you have your bar staff do it. But man, it makes such a huge difference. You get crystal clear ice and you can cut just like the ones that I showed you earlier on that video uh, where I'm cutting clear ice with some Japanese knives. That's, those were the blocks we were cutting, okay? Getting crystal clear ice cut exactly right and you can get them straight down, nice and neat, perfect presentation ice, right? It's not that hard. You can do ice at your bar. You can do it at home too. How do you get crystal clear ice at home? When you're at home, what you want to get is an igloo cooler. I'll show you a picture up here of it. The igloo cooler will freeze in your freezer the, down in one direction if you take the top off, okay? And these igloo coolers, little lunch coolers, are exactly the kind of cooler you would have if you were uh, sending your kid to lunch or having a picnic, okay? And these coolers, when you get them out, you kind of pry them apart, you flip them over, and you let them just rest, temper, and eventually that cube will get a little loose in there and you can either knock it out or it'll fall out on its own, just whoosh, by the, its own weight. And what you'll see at the end of that is the top of the cube that was at the bottom of the cooler before you flipped it over, that top will be cloudy ice and you can just shave that off, okay? With your knives, you can just shave it off, you can chip it off and then you're gonna have this block, crystal clear ice that froze in one direction. And then you're just gonna cut like we talked about before, like you saw in the video. You're just gonna saw a line with a bread knife, okay, till it gets down a little ways and you get a nice neat line, okay? Remember, cut in the middle for this, okay? Cut in the middle of every block. And then you're gonna press a well-sharpened, non-beveled, cheap busher knife and you're gonna grind it in there until it sets. This is what you get when you do the bread knife. And then when you set that knife, you get this point, okay? When you set this knife in there and you press just a little, you get a point. All right, and that point, then once you tap with something a little heavy, is what cuts the ice straight down to the bottom. And that is how you get clear ice at home. It's easy to do, you just need an igloo cooler. I mean, this, this whole thing, this whole process costs you 50 bucks, but when people come over to your home, they're gonna be baffled. How in the world do you have clear ice? And you're gonna say, I'm amazing. But you could also throw me some love. Ben the bar guy taught me, if you want it, but you know what, don't. Steal it. Say you're a genius and you figured it out. I don't care. I love it. I just want everybody to have great drinks. That's what I'm about. If you like crystal clear ice, that's how it's done. I hope you guys enjoyed how we do ice here at Reliable. I hope you like Tom Kazansky, our ice man. Don't hire that guy. It's just, he's our guy anyway. You don't want him. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a subscribe, like. And as always, guys, to better drinks. Nux, beer mug, daiquiri. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the video, and as always, got to give some props and love to Reliable Tavern, my employer for the last four years where I've been running the bar, and these guys are what make these videos possible. And if you like these videos and you want them to keep on rolling, I appreciate the support. You can hit me with a like and subscribe button over here or some video recommendations over here, all of which will keep these coming. I appreciate you guys. And like always, to better drinks, Nux, beer mug, daiquiri. Love you, mean it.